Okay, so we can probably begin. I hope today the quality of video will be a bit better due to usage of some innovative technology. I mean, tripod. Uh, so, uh, previously uh, on the previous lesson, we discussed a very simple, uh, a very simple statistical test that is binomial test. Uh, and um, uh, the data in this test uh, was very simple. It was just a number of successes, uh, like number of heads in, uh, in a series of uh, coin tossing. Uh, sometimes we work with data like this. This is called count data, when you count something. And uh, binomial is just one of uh, the tests that uh, can be applied to, to problems that uh, involve this count data. And there are some other like uh, his squared test that we will discuss a bit later. Uh, but uh, another uh, large part uh, of um, the cases when we uh, deal with statistical hypothesis testing uh, involves uh, not not count data, but uh, some numeric data, some numbers, real numbers. And uh, today we will discuss a fundamental theorem that allows us uh, to deal with uh, this numeric data. Uh, and this is uh, the lecture about estimates and central limit theorem. Uh, on the previous lecture, I said that in data science, we basically are interested not in the data itself, but in some uh, real world phenomena. And uh, this, to, to be analyzable, uh, we, uh, this real world phenomena should, uh, should allow some mathematical description to be more uh, exact, I can say that we model some real world phenomena with uh, much simpler mathematical models. Basically, mathematics is simple. What is complicated is uh, the outer world. And uh, we are replacing uh, this outer world, some, some real phenomena with simple mathematical models. And uh, one of uh, the basic mathematical model that uh, we will uh, deal with uh, is a procedure of sampling uh, from some population. Uh, term population here does not necessarily represent some population of people, but uh, we can think about it as a first example. Uh, so basically, okay, let me, let me give you an example. Um, example, we are interested in a question like uh, how tall are people in Moscow? So in other words, we want to estimate uh, average height of uh, people in Moscow or something like that, or not average or something else. And uh, how would you do this kind of research? Uh, what can you do if you're, if you're interested in this question? If you are interested in height of um, citizens of Moscow. Uh, if you have government, for example, you can, you have a, or if you have infinite amount of money, you can just measure every single person in Moscow. But uh, 
uh, we researchers are usually not uh, not rich enough to conduct this kind of research. Uh, and uh, we usually deal with much smaller scale of experiments. How, how would you conduct this kind of experiment? What would, what would you do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, basically, uh, what we do uh, in, in more or less every, every empirical research uh, is something like that. Uh, we have, uh, we have, let me, uh, let me move from people who are complicated creatures uh, to something more simple. Uh, let me consider some large box filled with balls. And uh, each ball has uh, a number written on it. Uh, something like this. And each ball corresponds to one citizen of Moscow. Uh, and we can model our sampling procedure, our, our choice of some random persons from Moscow. We can model it uh, by choosing random balls from this large box. Uh, so, We do random selection. And uh, what we usually do on practice, uh, we usually recruit um, some people to, to participate in our research, in our experiment. We can, for example, uh, just put some advertisement that if you want to help science, and earn some money, then you can just uh, come here to the laboratory and we will do some research with you. And uh, we, can, we can do it in some other way. But anyway, uh, we assume that uh, we, we do something like that, that we uh, choose random persons, random people from the whole population that we are interested in. Uh, you know, Actually, I say I say random, and uh, you previously said representative uh, sample. And uh, basically, the idea is uh, the following: uh, we will apply some analysis to the sample, but in order to allow to uh, uh, in in order to allow us to make some conclusion uh, about the population from the sample uh, that we consider. We, uh, we, we have to assume that these items in our sample uh, that we selected, so our random people that we, uh, that we recruited, that they are, well, representative, whatever it means. Uh, from mathematical point of view, the best, uh, the best possible uh, notion of representativeness is that they are obtained by uh, just this random selection where each, uh, each person in our population uh, has equal chances to be selected. So if uh, this is achieved, then we can say that our selection process, our sampling process gives us representative sample. I mean that uh, there are no any uh, there are no any reasons uh, to believe that the sample that we get uh, some um, in some uh, in some ways uh, that it is biased uh, against uh, their population. I mean, uh, yeah. So is it really the case that by means of random selection, we cannot get well, uh, it, uh, it, it uh, depends on your definition of representativity. 
uh, but uh, basically from mathematical point of view random selection is uh, the best because we have some theorems about this about uh, the results of this random selection uh, on practice uh, in fact on practice it is more or less impossible to make random selection for example if you do if you do opinion polls uh, and you for example you call people using telephones but you understand that some people doesn't uh, don't have don't, don't have telephones or some people don't answer when somebody calls them and uh okay uh one of the first very uh, very famous uh story about this uh issues with representativity is when uh i don't remember which uh which opinion polls company tried to predict some results of uh, elections not about trump elections but it is far 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 earlier and uh they uh uh, uh actually they uh, they used um telephones uh to to make this opinion call and uh they didn't take into account that at that time uh actually uh, those who had phones in their homes uh was not the same as the whole population so it was uh, for example if you if you have a phone you probably you probably uh, richer than average person and uh it means that you have some biased shifted uh political uh political opinions and uh, it was a complete failure uh, they uh they predicted um the, the results of the prediction was were a complete failure and even today uh after several decades of progress uh, in uh opinion polls uh we still have problems because uh the willingness uh, of uh, the, the willingness to answer uh depends on uh some features that we are interested in so uh it is possible that people who support some political party uh do not want to answer opinion polls and people who are for uh, another party they want to do it and we have just shifted uh shifted biased uh uh biased results so uh, actually this this stuff is complicated uh so and this is not a mathematical stuff so i'm going to ignore it for a while and i'm going to assume that my uh, selection process is actually a random selection and to simplify things even more uh, i will assume that this is random selection uh, with replacement i mean that it is possible basically to select one person several times so uh, mathematically the procedure works like the following i get a ball uh, i record uh, the number of this ball and then i return this ball to this box and this shuffle it again and theoretically it is possible that i will choose the same ball twice uh, this is actually it is of no importance in most of the cases because usually your population is much larger than your sample size and probability basically if you if you do random sampling of people in moscow the probability that you sample the same person twice is very small so you can uh, you can ignore it but analysis is a bit uh, easier in this case uh, so I believe that this is uh, that this is random selection. Uh, and after this random selection, I get several numbers. I can probably sample not uh, not only from adults but also from child. So, this is uh this is population uh in our example it is 
uh, each ball corresponds to one uh, citizen of Moscow, one person who lives in Moscow. And uh, then I have a sample. So sample, uh, in this case, sample is just a series of numbers, some finite collection of numbers that are obtained with this random selection process. Uh, so this is sample. And uh, if we are interested in some properties of this population, we will look at the sample and try to analyze this sample in order to answer questions about population. What is very important is that we are basically not interested in sample itself. We are interested in population. Uh, so we analyze sample and conclusions. Uh, we want that our conclusions that we make by analyzing sample be applicable to the population. Uh, now, uh, let us uh, uh, let us state uh, this uh, question: How tall are people in Moscow? In a bit more formal way. Uh, Basically, we have we have this this population. It can be modeled as a very 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 large array of numbers, and uh, we can basically we, we don't have access to this array of numbers. Uh, but if we had this access, uh, we can try to summarize it in some way. Um, for example, what people are usually think when they ask a question like this. If I want to summarize this population to just one number, one value, how can I do it? If I'm interested in the question, how tall are people in Moscow? Uh, yes, uh, for example, uh, this question can be formalized uh, like the following. Uh, what is uh, the average, the mean of uh, heights of all citizens in Moscow? Citizens of Moscow. Uh, but this is not the only possible um, formalization of this question. There are other questions that can be asked about this population, not only me. Um, basically, if I want to visualize this population, what can I do? Uh, do you know how to visualize the distribution of of some uh, histogram, yeah. Uh, and do you know how histograms are plotted? Do you know what histogram is? By one axis is the quantity of observation, mm -hmm. and on the other the quality of observation. Uh, let me. Uh, uh, let us consider an example. Uh, so uh, another question is, it is uh, how values of heights are distributed. And uh, we can visualize it uh, with a picture like this. Um,
if I have some numerical values, uh, I can do the following thing. Um, uh, I have this axis, and uh, let this is uh, axis of height. And uh, I can split uh, the range in which my data uh, changes, for example, from zero to uh, 250. And uh, I can uh, I can split uh, this segment into some smaller segments. For example, let us assume that I will split it into equal segments to simplify things. And uh, then I can draw a rectangle uh, which uh, which height is equal to a number of points that lie in the corresponding segment. So if my data uh, is represented by these points, uh, then uh, the corresponding histogram uh, will be drawn like this. Here it is zero, here it is one, 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 three. So this is one, this is three. Uh, here it is one, zero, one, one. Uh, not very informative histogram uh, for this data, but uh, this is just an example. Uh, so uh, why this histogram picture is useful? Uh, because uh, it allows us to see uh, where in which in which regions we have a lot of a lot of points and in which regions we have uh, a small amount of points so we have some understanding of the distribution so we understand for example that if we if we, if we discuss heights uh, they will be distributed uh, probably something like like this. So this is zero, this is uh, 250, and uh, you have probably some uh, some chaps or some children here, and we probably have some adults here. Uh, it will be something like this. And we probably have some uh, 180 somewhere here, something like this. So more people of this height, less people of this height, and so on. So uh, it is a good visualization technique. And uh, returning to our story about the samples and populations, if we ever can. Um, obtain the access to all these numbers, we can draw uh, a very, 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 um, very fine histogram with very small uh, widths of these beams. And this histogram will look, on, uh, will look like a smooth curve, most probably. Uh, just because we, we, we can make uh, beams very small because we have a lot of data and even in a very small beams, we have a lot of values. And uh, so we can think about this distribution of population or distribution of the data in the population. And when we have sample, uh, we can also think about distribution of this sample. And uh, of course, distribution of the sample is not identical to distribution of the population. Uh, for example, it is possible that distribution of population is something like this. Uh, but distribution of our sample, if it is small sample, uh, can be something like this. Uh, but uh, important result is that if we take a large sample, and if we are not extremely unlucky, then distribution uh, of sample will be close to distribution of population. 
So if you have only four numbers, probably this result says nothing. But if you have, uh, for example, 100, 100 items in our sample, uh, then if we draw a histogram here, it will look more or less like a histogram here. Again, if we are not extremely unlucky, it is possible that it will deviate, but it is the probability of this event is small. Uh, so, uh, let us return to this question about mean of uh, mean of heights of all citizens of Moscow. Uh, is there a critical number of values which I have to randomly select? Or the... uh, it depends. Yeah, um, is there... uh, if, if you are just interested in visualization, uh, probably uh, 100 can be, uh, can be enough just to make some understanding of, uh, of the distribution probably. You have smaller amount of data, and again, you can visualize it. Uh, basically, the more data you have, the more uh, the the smaller uh, the smaller beams uh, you can create. But it does not depend on the the whole amount of what I'm um, researching. Uh, it, uh, it well, um, it does not depend on the size of population. Actually, you can just think that population is just something large. Okay. Uh, now let us return to this question. Uh, if we are interested in estimation uh, of average uh, average height of people in Moscow, or in other terms, if we are interested in population mean, what can we do? Uh, so, uh, what uh, what would you do if you if you want to answer this question? And you have some sample. Yeah, you can just find uh, you can find average of these values. Uh, this is called uh, sample mean. And you can say that the sample mean is a somewhat some kind of estimate for the population mean. So if you have, for example, uh, 10 people chosen randomly and you uh, you find their heights and you you average that uh, that heights, average that numbers, uh, then uh, you have some approximation, some estimate uh, for the number that you are interested in. Uh, so, okay. Uh, and of all citizens of Moscow, this thing is called population mean. And uh, this is what we are interested in. We have we have a sample. Uh, let me denote our values in this sample as x1, x2, and so on, xn. N is sample size. number of elements in the sample. And uh, we can find 
sample mean. Uh, which is just x1 plus x2 plus and so on plus xn over m and uh, we can say that uh, it is an estimate uh, of population b uh, is it a good estimate or bad estimate? Let us assume that uh, I choose only one random person. And um, I have a colleague uh, who, who is, I believe, two, two, meter, two, meters, uh, two meters tall. Assume that I randomly chose him. And uh, then I will find average of the sample. So of only one number, the average is equal to the same number. Um, is it a good estimate for population mean or not? Uh, not very good, just because this is only, uh, only one person. And uh, we understand that uh, this person can be uh, can be far from uh, far from uh, population mean. Uh, but oh, what if if I have 100, 100 people in my sample and find average of their heights? Uh, will it be better or not? If I choose a higher number, for example, it will um, go more, um, drive more to the real number. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, exactly. In fact, uh, this is a mathematical theorem uh, that is called law of large numbers. And uh, it says that uh, this value, this uh, sample mean, um, uh, become close to population mean when n is large enough. So if we increase, uh, if we increase uh, sample size, uh, then sample mean becomes a better estimate for population means. And this is basically very, very intuitive thing. Yeah? Yes? And what that's a that's a very good question. Yeah. Uh, what does it mean? What does it mean when n is large enough? What is when it is enough? And uh, this is actually a, a, a crucial point uh, of this lecture. Uh, we will discuss how can we estimate uh, what what does it mean that n is is large enough. So this is this is a kind of tendency. It says that as n increases, this thing becomes more and more close to population mean. And when to stop? This is the question. Uh, to answer this question, I have to introduce another notion. Um, Uh, 
uh, I have to introduce another notion. Uh, and this notion uh, is related to um, uh, the question uh, like how far elements of some sample or some population from uh, their mean. Uh, let me draw a couple of pictures. So this section is called measures of uh, statistical dispersion. And let us consider two sets of numbers. Uh, this is just set of number. And I will draw the corresponding histogram. Will look like something like this. And we have another set of numbers. So let me denote this by X and this by Y. And And have these two histograms. And uh, let me ask the following question. First of all, uh, what can you say about an average uh, mean value for X and for Y? Uh, so it is difficult to answer uh, looking by this picture, but let me introduce some numbers here. For example, this is zero, this is one, this is two, this is three, and this is four. And the same thing here, this is zero, this is one, this is two, Three and this is four. So, what can you say about mean value here uh, at this at this graph? What is an average? Yeah, it is some something something near two. All uh, right, it is in the in the middle of the picture in a sense. Actually, we have some symmetry here, and due to this symmetry, we can say that uh, that the uh, average value is just in the middle. And um, what about this? Yeah, it is also somewhere somewhere close to, to number two. This is average. Uh, in, in fact, if you want to calculate it explicitly, you can just just sum up this these numbers and divide and you will you will get something something near to uh, but uh, there is a difference between these two data sets uh, I mean that 
the values of this data set are somewhat close to uh, to the values uh, to the mean value so mean value is here and uh, in this picture uh, the values are, are much farther from the mean value so the distance is much larger so if we are interested in the question how far elements of uh, some sample or in population how far they are from their mean value uh, then uh, we are interested in statistical dispersion and um, it is possible to find actually it is possible to give several possible definitions of uh, measures of statistical dispersion uh, but uh, we will use mostly uh, variance uh, and standard deviation let me introduce them So, uh, what is variance? Uh, let me assume that I have these numbers x1, x2, and so on, xn. This is sample, for example. And uh, I will denote uh, their average value by x bar. x bar is just an average. And uh, then I'm interested in uh, the deviation of these values from their average. So I can find these distances. These differences. And basically what I'm interested in is how far these values differ from the mean value on average so i want uh, i want these distances also to be average because i want just one number so i can try to do something like this i can try to find a sum of these values sorry there should be uh ellipses and divide by n what would i get if i find uh this value zero because some of them are positive some are negative exactly uh exactly if you have if you have some mean value x bar then actually it is it is it is mean it is in the in the middle of the picture in a sense uh so all values uh, some values are to the right from this um, from this mean value and some to the left and some of these uh, differences will be positive and some will be negative in fact uh, if you do some high school algebra uh, you, you will see that this uh, this thing is exactly zero in fact you can define mean uh, as a value that makes this sum zero. So your positive deviation exactly compensated by negative deviations. Okay, and what should we do? Uh, we, are, we are actually not interested in the sign of these differences. We are interested in so this this difference 
is uh, as as much important as this difference. That was not the sign does not important. Is not important. Uh, what can we do to to make all these uh, terms positive? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, actually, it is. It, it can be done in several possible ways. For example, you can put absolute value here and here. Uh, but people usually don't use this absolute value, but instead uh, they use uh, they they just take squares of all these values. And uh, this thing is called uh, sample variance. Uh, to be exact, if we divide by n, uh, this value is called biased uh, sample variance. Uh, to make it unbiased, we have to divide it not by n, but by n minus 1. I'm not going to explain why uh, you have to divide it by n minus one. It is, it can be, it can be said that uh, if you divide by n minus one, you can you get a little bit better, uh, a little bit better value with better statistical properties. But I'm not going to explain what does it mean exactly. So this is unbiased or corrected uh, sample variance. Uh, so uh, it is easy to see uh, when you look at this formula that uh, basically, uh, this value uh, catches uh, what we are interested in. This value catches uh, how far our data points are from their mean, just because it's exactly what it is written. Uh, but some properties of this value uh, are good and some are not so good. Uh, for example, uh, we have we have a problem that if uh, values of x are measured in some in some unit uh, for example what if x is measured in meters if it is something like height but it is measured in meters uh, what is uh, the unit for uh, for variance If X is measured uh, measured in meters, what is unit of measure? Uh, for variance of x. Square meters? Squared meters, yes. It is somewhat strange. Uh, for example, uh, it means that you cannot put, um, you cannot make any operations that involve your original values and your variance. For example, you cannot put variance on this picture because in this picture you have only uh, or on this picture because on these pictures uh, everything is measured in the same units of measure as X. Uh, and basically it is a bit strange that we measure something in meters, but the deviation of this value from mean value is not measured in meters. If you are interested in the deviation, you probably want some measure of distance, not measure of area. And um, that's why uh, people uh, sometimes people use not variance but standard deviation. 
uh, standard deviation is just a square root of variance. So And uh, in this case, if we uh, if we find this square root, uh, then we will get value that is measured again in meters. Uh, so we can just put it somewhere here. For example, we can consider some regions uh, with the center here at this mean value, and uh, you can, for example, get this point and add some standard deviation and. Uh, subtract this standard deviation and get some region. We'll do it a bit later. So uh, this is this is what we uh, we will use. Are there any questions so far? So basically, these values like variance or standard deviations, they are part of um, how to call it descriptive statistics, a way to say something about the data, uh, but not, not just uh, give you all uh, data points, but give you some summary about the data. And uh, this uh, dispersion things like variance and standard deviations uh, are very important when you are actually work with data. For example, um, let me consider an example. Uh, in the first research, Uh, mean age of participants or uh, informants uh, is, for example, 40 years and uh, standard deviation is three years. And in the second research, uh, mean age uh, is again 40 years, uh, but standard deviation is uh, Fifteen years. Uh, what can you say about differences between these two researches? So, uh, in both of research, uh, average age of, of informants is. Uh, 40 years. Uh, but how this research differs? Who are uh, the main objectives of this research, of the first research and of the second research? Anybody? Uh, anybody else? So in the first, uh, it's like middle-aged uh, people, mm -hmm. uh, and in the second, uh, there are young adults, yes, yes, and more aged people. Yeah, uh, basically here we are focused focused on uh, uh, we are focused on uh, informants who are forty years, probably forty five years, probably thirty five years, but. Uh, so this is rather narrow, uh, rather narrow interval of, of ages. 
But uh, here we are more or less interested in all adults, and probably not only adults, but probably some some teenagers can can be included into this kind of research. But a small amount of them, but they can be uh, they can happen to uh, to be included here. So uh, these two researches are different in this uh, in their in the selection of uh, what people are interested. Um, what what people are studied in this in this research? Uh, so uh, yeah, it is often uh, it is often reported like this. Uh, uh, some measures like age are uh, are often reported like uh, average value and standard deviation. Sometimes people write uh, something like forty plus minus three. Uh, this uh, this formula can be a bit misleading because it can make various things, uh, but uh, in uh, a lot of cases, uh, this value is just a standard deviation. Uh, note that uh, it does not mean that the youngest person here is 37 years old. It is possible to get some values that are uh, outside of a region from 37 to uh, 43, but uh, at least it gives you some some scale. Okay. Uh, so, uh, are there any questions so far? Okay, uh, then let us uh, return to central limit theorem. Uh, in, because actually what, what I was talking about, about variances and so on, uh, it is uh, some preparation to discuss central limit theorem. Uh, so we are interested in the question uh, how far are sample averages uh, from the corresponding Uh, average and mean uh, are synonymous, so I will use uh, them. Sometimes I will use one word, sometimes another. Uh, from the corresponding population average. Uh, let me uh, let me consider an example. Uh, let us uh, consider a very compact population. Uh, let population be uh, just a set of three numbers. Five, seven, and
one, five, and six. Uh, can you please find uh, population mean? Uh, yeah, now yeah. this is five plus six plus one over three. It is 12 over three, it is four. Yes. Okay, and now, um, uh, basically, a very important thing uh, will happen now. Uh, I will ask uh, what happens if I would generate all possible samples from this population of a given size and i'm interested in the distribution of mean value of these samples okay uh, so let us first uh, so I'm interested in the following question, uh, which values uh, with which probability uh, can sample mean uh, take if and uh, first example if n equals to one so i have samples of size one then which samples can i obtain Uh, yeah, if I have just one element samples, uh, then uh, I have uh, three possible samples, sample one, uh, sample five, and sample six. And what are their corresponding sample means? One, five, and six, yes. Sample, um, yeah mean of a sample that is of size one is just the, the only value that we have in this sample okay uh so let us draw a picture Uh, we have population here, and this population consists of uh, three numbers, one, five, six, and so it can be visualized by this kind of histogram, and uh, then, then I will draw a histogram of these values. Of sample means. So this is sample means. And uh, if n equals to one, then base distribution is exactly the same as the population. Uh, now, uh, a bit more complex problem. Uh, what happens if uh, what happens if n equals to two? Okay. Um, I want everybody to write down all possible, all possible samples and their corresponding sample means. 
uh, I recall that we do uh, sampling with replacement. It means that when you choose uh, your random value, you return it to the box and then shuffle it again. So if you are in Zoom, please um, send me in a private message uh, your list of all possible of all possible samples that you get of size two. Uh, okay, uh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I have several answers and uh, all of them are good, but some of them are correct and some of them are not correct. Um, and uh, actually a popular problem here is that um, you have to take into account an order in which you uh, choose your balls. Uh, I mean that uh, we have, uh, for example, sample one five and uh, the corresponding mean, uh, the corresponding mean is one plus five over two is three. 
Uh, and for example, we have sample six six, and corresponding mean uh, is six. But uh, if I ask, what is the probability to get mean three? We have to take into account that we can also take mean three, uh, not with sample one five, but with sample five one. That is basically a different sample. And so uh, if I put all possible samples here, uh, I will get something like this. Um, one five one six six one and five six six five uh note also that uh, as we do sampling with replacement it is possible for our numbers to coincide this is not forbidden and uh, for each of this sample we can find the corresponding mean and uh this mean will be Okay, this is uh, three, this is five, this is one, uh, this is 3.5, this is six one, uh, 3.5, and this is 5.5, 5.5. So uh, these are the values that we get. And uh, let me draw the corresponding values uh, on, on the picture. So uh, we still have uh, values one and six. This here and here. Uh, but uh, we also have uh, values Three and we have value three two times. So it is this is one, this is six, uh, this is three two times, and we have number five one time, and we have three point five two times. And 5.5 uh, So if I would uh, draw the histogram, it will look like the following. Uh, something like this. And uh, you see that uh, for this value n equals to two, uh, your values uh, again are located some, uh, somewhere near uh, the population mean that is four. So let us draw this population mean also. It is somewhere here. Population mean. Uh, but what is important is that now uh, for n equals to two, so this is this is the case uh, n equals to one, and this is case n equals to two. For n equals to two, uh, these extreme values like one or six, they can happen, but probability that they happen is smaller than, for example, in this case. Because in this case, you just have to put one once. And in this case, you have to put this one twice. And uh, on the other hand, we have a lot of numbers that are near this number four, which is sample mean. Population mean. Uh, population mean, yes. And uh, basically, this is an illustration uh, a, a very rough illustration because we on the uh, change n from one to two, but this is an illustration uh, of law of large numbers. I mean that 
the most of uh, values that we will obtain as uh, as sample mean will be concentrated near this population mean. Okay. And this is uh, this is the mechanism uh, that illustrates this law of large numbers. And uh, it also allows us to estimate um, what does it mean uh, that we have large enough uh, sample. Uh, so uh, let me uh, let me reiterate uh, the main idea, and we will uh, we will make a break. Uh, the main idea is that we investigate not a sample of some particular, uh, not not average of some particular sample, but we investigate the distributions of all possible samples that can be uh, obtained from this population, just like we did it here. Uh, if we increase n. Uh, just uh, this this kind of calculations uh, will be uh, rather boring and uh, and complicated. Just to enumerate all possible all possible samples that uh, we can obtain, even even in this simple example, is not very simple. But it is not uh, what is needed. Uh, what I, I want to show is just what we are what we are studying. We are studying the distribution of possible sample means. So we consider these sample means also as a kind of something random. We, we think that we take random sample and then uh, we, we find its sample mean. And uh, now we have, we have some random value and we can be interested in the distribution of the sample value. So uh, with which probabilities, which value is uh, obtained. Uh, let us make a 10 minutes break, and after the break, uh, we continue with the statement of uh, central limit theorem, and then we uh, will discuss how to analyze it in our 10 minutes break. А можно вас спросить? Давайте. А почему мы объединяем 3, 3,5 и 5,5? Ну, вот на графике, на ну, ну, как бы я просто должен был показать, что у, у этих штук вероятность выпадения больше, чем, а, uh, uh -huh. uh, значит, чем, например, у единицы. So, the question was, uh, the question was, why we uh, put two points for, for example, 3.5 here? And my answer is that we have to show that probability to get 3.5 is twice as large as probability to get one as average because we have two possible outcomes for that corresponds to this 3.5 one six and six one and we have to take it, it into account because we are interested in in uh, not, not only with these values but also with the corresponding probabilities Можно еще сказать, вы можете всегда писать черный маркер, его просто лучше видно. Хорошо, давайте буду писать черный маркер. Ну как, вроде сейчас, вроде сейчас должно быть ничего так видно доска, по крайней мере, я вот сейчас смотрю на своем компьютере. Ну да, сейчас хорошо. Вроде видно.
So we can probably continue. Uh, so uh, just uh, just a couple of words uh, to finish with this uh, central limit theorem. Uh, what uh, what is it about? Um, what happens if we increase uh, this sample size n? Uh, of course, if I uh, would uh, draw the table that corresponds to n equals to three, it will be rather low. And instead of it, uh, let us just think um, about the following experiment. Let us assume that we do not try to enumerate all possible samples, but uh, we just uh, do the following procedure. Uh, we uh, create, for example, 100 or 1000 samples randomly. For each sample, we find the corresponding mean, and then we draw the distribution of these means, just like here. Uh, what happens uh, in this case uh, if we increase n? Uh, let us continue drawing pictures. So I will continue here. Uh, again, we have, uh, for example, four. This is uh, population mean. A and now assume that n equals to, say, five. Uh, is it possible to get uh, a value one in this case? A value one is a sample mean. Uh, is it possible to get a sample from this population of size five? 
uh, that has a uh, sample mean equals to one. It is possible, but very improbable. Uh, yes, it is possible, but what is the probability? Uh, what is probability that mean equals to one? One third in the power of six. Yes, exactly. In fact, it, it, the only the only way to get mean that equals to one is just to get an outcome one 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 one, and the probability of this outcome is one third to the power five, which is quite small. So if I uh, would draw the histogram of possible sample means, uh, then uh, here near number one. And uh, here, for example, near number six, uh, I would draw very, very, very small rectangles. So this this probability is not zero, but it is it is rather small. And uh, basically, most of points, in a sense, uh, will be located uh, here near this population mean. So the corresponding histogram, actually, you can draw it uh, on practical lesson with R. Uh, you can draw it more or less exactly. Uh, but now, uh, just I'm uh, just hypothesizing, uh, just by looking at this picture, I can assume that uh, most of samples uh, will give me sample mean somewhere close to this number four. <laughs> So it probably uh, will be something like uh, maybe uh, something like this. I can probably get something like this. Uh, so uh, you see that idea actually is very simple to get extreme values of uh, the sample mean you have to be very unlucky you have to obtain something like this in your sample so it means that in this case your sample will be not very representative uh, it, it, it will be very far from the population uh, if you think about uh, some real uh, real, real world uh, example it is like you select uh, five people randomly from uh, citizens of moscow and all of them uh, for example are students of high school of economics uh, it is it is quite unprobable uh, unprobable and this is why extreme values uh, will uh, will decrease their probability and values in the middle the values near near the population mean uh, will increase their probability and uh, then if you increase sample size even more you would get uh, you would get a histogram Uh, that looks uh, more or less like the following. Uh, something like this. This is bell-shaped curve uh, that uh, is very famous. Uh, and this is the essence of uh, the central limit theorem. Uh, central limit theorem says uh, that if you increase uh, number of uh, if you increase number of elements in your sample, uh, then uh, the distribution of sample means uh, have uh, a histogram that looks like this curve. And uh, not only this. Uh, also, uh, it is possible uh, to find not only this shape, uh, just qualitative shape of this curve, uh, but also some um, quantitative parameters. 
First of all, uh, it will be located around uh, the population mean. And uh, another feature of this of this distribution is that it's standard deviation. So some measure of uh, measure of how far you get points in this uh, in this distribution. So how far your sample means are from your population mean. Uh, then this standard deviation uh, of population means. Uh, equals to standard deviation of population itself uh, divided by square root of f. So if you increase, uh, if you increase uh, n, for example, um, if you multiply it by four, then standard deviation of population means will uh, decrease by dividing by two. And uh, actually uh, this uh, this value is the answer uh, to the question uh, like how far elements of my um, how far uh, how far sample means are from the population mean. They can be uh, as they, they can be quite quite far. But probability of this event is very small. And then uh, we can use information about the shape of this curve and information about the standard deviation uh, to give uh, to give exact answers, like probability to obtain value that is uh, larger than five uh, is then you have to do some calculations to find this error, but you will get the answer. And this is the main idea of application of the central limit theorem that you know this distribution of sample means. Uh, basically, to state this uh, theorem accurately, you know, I have to rescale this picture a little bit. So you see that if n uh, becomes uh, larger and larger, this standard deviation becomes smaller and smaller because you divide it by square root of n. So if I increase n, uh, it, it will be more and more concentrated around the population. But if I'm interested in some limit shape, I have just to, to rescale this picture a little bit. And to do it, I introduce a new number. So uh, we have sample, uh, we have sample mean, uh, sample x1 and so on, xn. Uh, sample mean is denoted by x bar. And uh, then we will introduce a value that is called uh, Z statistics. And uh, this Z statistics is calculated uh, in the following way. You have to uh, you have to get your X um, sorry. Yeah, you have to get X bar. You have to subtract uh, population mean. So basically, we just shift this picture to the left uh, in such a way that uh, it is and that this population mean is in the center. Uh, then we have to uh, divide this difference by standard deviation of population. And then we have to multiply it by square root of n. Uh, why we need this multiplication by square root of n? What happens uh, when you do this multiplication? So you had uh, you had some values here. Uh, then you find this difference. 
and then you find then you divide it by standard deviation of population so your rescale it slightly by uh, dividing by some constant and then you multiply it uh, by square root of n what happens with this picture so all points here are multiplied by square root of n what happens with picture becomes wider mm -hmm. yeah it becomes wider so we 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 make it we make it wider and uh this uh this coefficient is chosen exactly to compensate the fact that this distribution becomes more and more narrow around the population mean uh, so we make it wider and uh, and uh, after that, the distribution of this uh, Z statistics of this Z value uh, is indeed, uh, it, it, it follows uh, this distribution with this law, uh, which is called standard normal distribution. So in standard normal distribution, you have uh, you have mean zero, and standard deviation of uh, standard normal distribution uh, is one. And we know that uh, the distribution of this value z tends to this this bell shaped curve, and actually this tendency is rather fast. For not very, uh, not very, not very bad initial distribution, I believe thirty items uh, is enough uh, for uh, to, to 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 obtain a curve that is very close to this one. So this is uh, this is basically the statement of central limit theory that this uh, z value that is calculated using the sample uh, with this formula. That this that value, that its distribution follows this law. So it means that if you repeat the sampling procedure a lot of times, uh, get a lot of values of uh, this the statistics, and plot the corresponding histogram, this histogram will look like this thing. Note that this thing is just a standard. This is just a one, one universal universal distribution. It is. Uh, it is something very, uh, very well huge that uh, any initial distribution, you start with any initial distribution and basically with very mild assumption on this distribution, you only have to uh, assume that this distribution has, uh, uh, has variance, that variance is defined. Uh, but under this uh, this assumption, uh, you will get this exactly this distribution in uh, as a distribution of this uh, z statistics. So this is uh, this is what this uh, central limit theorem is about. We will use it on the next uh, lesson when we will discuss t test. Uh, but now uh, I want you to practice uh, a little bit uh, in, in R. So uh, Ivan, please. Uh, so I think uh, I think we will just uh, turn on uh, another computer, yes, and we will use this our Can I ask just a clarification question? Yes, yes, sure. So uh, we need that statistics just to uh, so make well, so our graph wider and. Uh, to yes, explain. just just to obtain some limit, uh, some limit, uh, limit distribution, some limit figure, because otherwise figure becomes more and more narrow around uh, around uh, the population mean, and we don't have any meaningful limit. Uh, and if we want to say that, okay, this picture becomes becomes more and more um, narrow around the mean, but the shape of this picture. 
tends to some uh, to some fixed shape. And to say it, we need uh, we need this rescaling and uh, finding this uh, Z statistics. <clears throat> 